Hello and thanks for joining me. Well, I'm no expert on TIG welding and I don't want to pretend to be, but uh, I've had some moderately good success in a short period of time. Uh, but one reason I had that success is I had some people coaching me, telling me the appropriate settings for a good starting point. Uh, I know the first day I got the welder I was just overwhelmed with all the settings and after I figured out what they did I didn't really know what the appropriate starting point would be. So uh, what we're going to cover in this video is straight DC, straight DC welding with uh, a quarter inch steel. And from that point that'll get you started and once you master the quarter inch you can change the settings and, and see what effect it has. So anyway, let's get started. Okay, one more thing before we get started. This video is going to be about torch controlled uh, welding. This triggers the arc, uh, and but you can use a foot pedal which controls the amperage and that's kind of handy. But I've got fairly used to doing it at the torch and uh, this video is about using the torch. So I wouldn't run out and get you a foot pedal. You may want to get one at some point, but the torch actually works pretty good and, and I've got used to it. Okay, the first thing is what tungstens to use. This is where you start. Uh, 332nd or 2.4 millimeter in diameter and this is 2% lanthiated. I have no idea what that means, but it's got a blue end on it. So go for the 332nd with the blue end and that'll weld eighth inch to three eighths, no problem. And from what I understand it'll weld aluminum, steel, whatever. There's a lot of different ones, but good starting point is that blue 332nd. Okay, when you get the tungsten, it'll be blunt on the end. There's a lot of different preferences and opinions and, uh, and some science behind that angle right there. That's probably sharper than it should be. Uh, with it sharp like that, the tip doesn't last as long, but it creates a good stable arc and a fairly wide arc. And I find it works pretty good for me. Uh, the way you sharpen it, you can do it on a belt grinder. Uh, I sharpen it on my CBN grinder. like that. And you want the grinding marks to go the length of the uh, tungsten. You don't want to go like this. I don't know why that makes a difference, but that's the recommended way to sharpen the tungsten. Okay, let's take a look at this torch. All that is right there is to cover the tungsten. Right here, that's your uh, cup. They call it a cup. That's a number seven. That's a good starting point. The larger the cup, the better gas coverage you get. This tip right here, the welder comes with a universal tip, uh, but I bought some aftermarket. Uh, they're actually from Yes Welder. Uh, and that's specific to this size tungsten. And there's a collet. Uh, that's definitely specific to the rod, to the tungsten. Screw that in there. And right there, the collet, that goes in there. And when you tighten this down, it tightens the position on that collet so, and holds it in position. First you need the cup on there because you want to set the, the amount of stick out there like that. Something that's kind of tricky is it, it tends to move outward when you tighten this end piece. So start out about an eighth inch out, maybe a little further and tighten it down. That's about right. More is okay. 
uh, but you get better gas coverage on your weld if it's not sticking out too far. So that's your starting point there. Okay, let's discuss gas flow. Uh, that's your pressure and this is your flow meter and you got to trigger the torch. It's probably a little bit high. But around 20, I don't know what that's in, a setting of uh, 20 is about right for your gas flow. Uh, you know, there's some argument for having less or having more. More is not better, but 20 is enough. Okay, let's take a look at these settings. When you first turn the welder on, it's displaying amps. In this case, for quarter inch steel, I'm guessing, and it's trial and error. Uh, you'll, you'll get experienced and you'll know where to set it after a while. But a good starting point for quarter inch steel is 150 amp. Uh, that may be a little high, but that's probably where I would start. Right here is your different weld types. There's AC, AC pulse, DC, DC pulse, and stick. We want to be in straight DC. Pulse has some advantages. Uh, I haven't seen it be a huge advantage. Some people really like it. But for now, we're just starting out basic, uh, straight DC. And right here is something called 2T, 4T, and spot. We're not going to go into spot today, but 2T means when you push the button on your torch, the arc starts, and when you let off it, the arc, arc quits. 4T, you push it once and the arc keeps going and you have to push it again to shut it off. 99% uh, of the time I'd say you want to stay in 2T. I guess if you're welding a long time, 4T would be handy. Uh, but for now we're going to leave it in 2T. Uh, right here, all these settings, well that's how you adjust your amperage turning that knob. But all these settings are accessed by pushing this knob. The default view is amperage. Your maximum amperage. And the rest of them are controlling an upslope and downslope timer in pre-flow and post-flow on your gas. Okay, this setting here is, is post-flow. And you want a couple of seconds of gas coming out of your torch before the arc starts. This will stop your weld from oxidizing. Uh, we're going to start that out at, at 2. Uh, you can make it longer if you want. Longer certainly doesn't hurt, but it's just not necessary, I don't think. Uh, the next is your starting amperage. Uh, we're going to start out about, let's say, 30 amps. If you go too low, the arc has trouble starting. Uh, the next setting is a three second timer. That's where I got it set. You can set it for whatever you want, but that's how long it takes to get the maximum amperage. The next is where it defaults to, is 150 amps. And then the next one is downslope timer. It takes one second to get to the minimum amperage, which the next setting is 5 amp, which is basically off. I don't see any huge advantage to uh, a really slow downslope. The post flow, on the other hand, is very important. That's two seconds of gas, maybe even three would be better. That allows the weld to cool uh, after the arc quits. And that's very important because if the gas shut off immediately, the, the weld would oxidize. And if nothing else, it looks bad. Anyway, uh, that's the basic settings for starting for quarter inch steel. Uh, you may find that you want 140 amp or 155 amp or whatever, but that'll get you started. Uh, for eighth inch steel, I, I would say maybe 125. Uh, that might be too high, but that's about where I like it. Get good penetration and uh, it's a, comfortable speed to move. If you go too high, you got to move quick. So starting out, you don't want to go with too many amps. I hope that made sense. Uh, 
Maybe future videos I will uh, go into aluminum. I'm not really good at aluminum yet. Uh, but maybe you can learn with me. Maybe you can give me some pointers. Uh, anyway, that's the settings. One setting I forgot to mention here is this one right here. That's the tungsten diameter. I'm running a 2.4 millimeter tungsten. If that is not set right, it won't let me go over a certain amount of amperage or under. Like watch this. If I go too high, I need a larger tungsten size for 250 amp. This size tungsten I believe will go up to 200. About 225 looks like. Same goes for undersize, I believe. Yeah, comes back on. The tungsten's too big for 36 amps. Okay, I've got a couple of clean. Clean is very important with TIG welding. Clean quarter inch uh, by one inch, quarter inch thick steel. What I want to do is get a good pool going of molten steel and then just touch the uh, filler rod right into it, move ahead, wait for a puddle to form, hit it again, just like that. So let's give it a try. Okay, there's what I got. It was okay. I mean, that's nothing to brag about. Guaranteed a good weld. But uh, I think I was running a little bit cool. We're going to bump the amperage up to 165. Try it again. We'll try it on the back side. Okay, here we go. 165 amp. There's the post flow. Ramping up. Okay, there yeah, I'm at full amperage. Okay, I let off the trigger, ramps down, blows gas for about Two seconds there. That's a pretty good looking weld there, I think. Well, it looks like 165 was about right for quarter inch steel. Uh, I could have gone a little slower and used 150, but 165 was a little better. Uh, that about wraps it up for today, but I'll put some links on the bottom. There's a graphics there that explains the uh, layout on the Yes welder. Uh, it's very similar on, on different types of welders, a little different screen, but it's the uh, same concept. And uh, I also put some links to how to sharpen tungsten and what effect it has, uh, plus a link to this welder. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Uh, be sure and subscribe and ring that bell.